I asked Joyce one time, it was probably after we had our third baby, maybe. So I had a newborn, two little kids running around. And I asked her one time, I'm like, okay, I think I had listened to a teaching, heard her say it or something about how she got up before everybody else. I'm like, did you really get up and do that every morning? And I was hoping she was going to say, oh, not every morning. She said, yes, I did. <laughs> Are you that sure? That was what I was hoping to hear. Because <laughs> I'm exhausted. Hi, friends. Welcome to the Talk It Out podcast. This is where all of us get together to share what's really going on in our lives, talk about how we can get through it together, and how God is in the midst of all of it. And today we're talking about a very important aspect of that walk as a Christian, and that is spending time with God and Bible study. And some help for you. It's going to be real practical. It's not going to be, you know, just surfacy. We're going to dig in. And so I have a question for you, Erin, ready. before ready. we start. So you just came through <laughs> what, what I would think would be a really stressful time, and I'm so impressed with you. <laughs> you can I I'm just, 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 I'm just so impressed <laughs> that you were able to do this and kept a smile on your face, a, a tight it's one. Just, just, so what Aaron did was they sold their house, mm -hmm. bought another house, mm -hmm had a week without a place to live, mm -hmm. moved once, mm -hmm. had no place to go, went on vacation, and had a place to live there, came back to boxes into mm -hmm. a new house, mm -hmm. and, and had to close in the middle of all of it. It's just like, I think about it, and my mind just goes, how? How did you do it? It's probably why I think I sit and stare a lot right now. <laughs> like, in the past couple of days, people would say something to me, and I'm just like... <laughs> Give me a second. Like, I've got an answer for you. Are you Hello? there? <laughs> yeah. You know, something really interesting, for those of you who have walked with the Lord, like if you walk with Him for any amount of time, I'm excited to talk about this today. When He, when you get into a season that's really chaotic and busy, like what you just explained sounds ridiculous. But when you're in it, <laughs> He gives you the grace that you need. That's true. So we knew, we knew this gift He gave us at this new house was totally a God thing. So it... He gave us the grace to walk through it, but it was it was a lot, and I'm really tired. <laughs> and when we're done here, I'd like to just curl up on this. Couch I'll just and take move a nap. over to the side so yeah. that you can lay down here on the couch because we just, just close your eyes. Yes, I just for the first time in three weeks slept in my bed on like upright, wow. like not on a mattress or somebody else's bed. Upright on the bed. <laughs> See, <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. I can't make sentences, you know, like with like the frame in place. Oh, I like get a, it. <laughs> you know, like a bed has like legs. And a right, box not, spring. Not just a mattress on the ground. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. You weren't standing upright in the bed to sleep. Well, quite possibly so. I was. I was really tired. And I do sleepwalk quite a bit. <laughs> Me too. So that's possible. And sleep talks so much. I know. It's awful. Well, you hear things like that. And yeah. honestly, that's not that out of the norm for no. a lot of us. We all have those times in our mm -hmm. life that you think, how am I going to do this? Yeah. And that consistent time with God and that help from him is mm -hmm. so important. And even if you don't, you know, like you can't do it on that day that you're moving, whatever it may be, right. that's what we want to talk through. So yeah. we have a guest with us that we just love, and she's going to talk about her own chaotic life as well <laughs> and how she does this too. Nicole Meyer is with us, and Nicole is an amazing woman, and I just love her with all my heart. She is, well, I'll just throw this out because this is Joyce Meyer's. Yeah, talk it out podcast. She is Joyce's daughter-in-law. She's married to Joyce's son, Daniel Meyer. Four amazing young boys. She might describe them differently right now. It depends on what's going on in her <laughs> life, but I think they're incredible. She homeschools. She has a lot going on. And so we thought, what greater Yes. person to talk about all of this with us, being able to have a normal life with a lot going on mm -hmm. and still make time to be with God and why it matters. So Nicole, hey. Hi. So good to see you guys. You too. It's We're a so big glad day you're here. for you too, right? Today, a lot going on. Yes. My two oldest boys started school today and our oldest who turned 16 this summer and got his license drove them to school. Oh, wow. Yes. That's it was huge. very exciting. A little <laughs> nerve wracking, but he's a really good driver. And so we're proud of him. But I was like, there goes my baby. <laughs> do you so. stand at, when you do that, do you just stand outside on the driveway and just watch him 
drive well, the away. The first time they drove away, I would, yeah, they make fun of me because I take pictures like all the time. Yes. Every new thing that's happening, I have to take pictures. So they're like in the car, buckling their seatbelts, and I'm over there <laughs> taking pictures secretly. And then thankfully, we can track them on our phone. So I'm like, oh, there they are. There yeah. they are. <laughs> oh, such a big day. <laughs> that yeah. technology, it makes such such a difference. Yes. Yeah, sometimes it's great, and then sometimes I'm like, want to chuck it out the window. Yep. But yeah, yep. So here's Nicole's secret. So don't tell anyone. But she has a babysitter, so that she can do this podcast with us, and she's supposed to call her when she's done with the podcast. So we told Nicole, well, we'll probably need maybe six to eight hours. Uh, yeah, we got a lot to for say. the podcast. I just have so. a strong <laughs> feeling that any of our friends listening right now are in full support of our plan. Yeah, because I'll bet all of the other moms would do the exact same thing. <laughs> And in the meantime, after we're done here in a half hour, she's going to go out and read a book in a hammock. <laughs> Live your best life, Nicole. I love it. <laughs> I'm going to. <laughs> well, we're going to start with this. We're going to go to a teaching from Joyce where she talks about the importance of spending mm-hmm. that dedicated time with God, why it makes such a difference. And then we're going to get into the real um, important practical stuff of how to do it. So watch this. This word vital in Psalm 27, 4 was real important to me because when something's vital, that means you can't live without it. You just can't do without it. And so the Lord taught me by an example. I had an uncle who had a pacemaker and I don't know how pacemakers are now, but back then they had to be, he had to charge it once a week. And um, so I called my aunt and uncle one day and said, you guys want to go out to lunch? We'll take you out for a steak dinner, pay the bill. My aunt said, no, we can't go. Your uncle's got to charge his pacemaker. And Maybe another time. And I said, oh, he can do that later. (laughs) I didn't understand. He can do that later. Well, she got in. So she said, well, no, he can't. He would die. (laughs) And actually, when God began to speak to me, if you don't put me first and seek me above all else, put me first in your time, require me as a vital necessity, You're going to be like that person that's not plugged up to the machine or, I mean, let me just ask a question. If you had to take dialysis every day to stay alive and somebody called you at eight o'clock on Monday morning and said, hey, let's, let's go shopping today and I'm going to take you out to breakfast. You say, I can't do that because <laughs> it would be vital for you to do the other thing. And see here, our problem is, is we just don't get it. We don't know how important it is. We don't even keep our appointments with God as well as we keep our appointments with the dentist. And I am not trying to be legalistic here. I'm not even going to try to tell you when to pray, how to pray, when to spend time with God, morning person, nighttime person, you know. All I can tell you is if you, if you don't get plugged in to your power source, <laughs> Then, you know, I mean, sometimes I like to bring a lamp out here and have a power cord, but have it unplugged. And, you know, so you're trying and trying and trying, can't figure out why the light's not going on. It's got a bulb, you know, put another bulb in, still not working. What's wrong? What's wrong? It's not plugged in. A lot of people just get unplugged. Or some people never get plugged in to start with. They don't hear the right stuff. They don't learn the right thing. And I'm trying to tell you that a relationship with God is not nearly so much about following rules and regulations. And I'm, I'm not, a, you know, we need to have disciplines and we need to have guidelines. But I think a lot more people would spend more time with God if they weren't also wrapped up in what they were supposed to do during that time. I don't care what you do. Just get in a room and spend time with God. Laugh, cry, play music, read, jump, shout, take a nap. I don't care. But just start cutting out some time some, you got to get the God habit. Amen? I don't have to remind myself to brush my teeth. I do it probably three, four, five times a day. I have a habit. I'm writing a new book now on habits, making good habits, breaking bad habits. And one of the chapters is you got to make the God habit. Amen? How many of you think that'd be a great habit to have, the God habit? And so I finally got it through my thick head. I'm not going to be happy if I don't spend time with God. I'm not going to have peace if I don't spend time with God. 
I'm not going to have a good marriage if I don't spend time with God. This ministry is going to be a piece of junk if I don't spend time with God. I'm going to be frustrated. I'm going to be worn out. I'm going to have no anointing. Everything is going to be hard. I'm going to labor with everything. And if I will just put God first in my time, everything else will work out. God will fight my battles. It is such a great way to describe it as needing to plug in to that source of our power and to do it um, because you need it. Yeah. And I think when we do that for a while, we begin to feel the difference that mm -hmm. it makes. It's, it's hard to know the difference that it makes until you do it and experience it firsthand. Mm -hmm. And then after you do that, when you don't do it for a while, you feel that again too. You, oh, absolutely. You feel that difference. I can give a very honest example of that. Last week when we were on vacation, um, I didn't. I didn't make that a priority, and I often don't on vacation, and that is not something I'm proud of. But I just, I we were, and there was no structure, so sure. I wasn't spending any time with God. And a few things came up while we were gone, and they just it caused me to tailspin. And some of it could have been the stress of all that we had going on, but also I know that I could have handled my emotions so much better had I done exactly what we just mm. talked about. Yeah, like I know where my power source is. I know that. This is so important, and I've seen the difference, but I know when I didn't do that for a whole week, I was a mess. I w it was a mess for me and everybody around me. <laughs> That's this thing. We all suffer, you know? If yes. I don't do it, everybody around me suffers. Yeah. So, Nicole, you have a lot going on, and, and I'm not going to ask you to do this because I think it would be wrong, but if you picked up your your camera, your your computer monitor, and turned it around, I wonder if everything would look as perfect as it does right behind where you are right now. <laughs> look at her face. <laughs> Literally on the other, so I'm in our bedroom, and on the other side of the bed, there's like five pairs of shoes and like a bag and like all this stuff, and I just like shove it behind <laughs> Thank you. Over there. <laughs> so are you a morning person, or how how do you, with... Four boys and everything going on, how do you make this time to plug into your power? Well, I would say I'm like a, a late morning, early afternoon person. Like, <laughs> That's fair. Really great time. But I will say, I asked Joyce one time, it was probably after we had our third baby, maybe. So I had a newborn, two little kids running around. And I asked her one time, I'm like, okay, I think I had listened to a teaching, heard her say it or something about how she got up before everybody else, got her time in with the Lord. I was like, did you really? Like when, <laughs> I know when she started the ministry, Danny was a baby. She had older kids too. I'm like, did you really get up and do that every morning? And I was hoping she was going to say, oh, not every morning. She's like, yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Are you that sure? That's what I was hoping to hear. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm exhausted. I'm like getting up in the night with a baby. You know, you know how it is. Yeah. And so, but she also helped me by saying too that God knows the season that you're in. Mm -hmm. And because I was like feeling like, oh, I can't get up before everybody. I have to sleep like as much as I can. And she's like, God knows the season that you're in, and there's grace for that season. And like you do what works for you at the time. Like yeah. some yeah. people. Yeah. and whatever. But I will say, I know for me and for our life right now, me getting up before everybody else is the only way that I'm going to be able to spend that time with God. And it does make the rest of the day way better. I'm a way nicer wife. I'm a way nicer yeah. mom if I have that time. So even though it's not my favorite thing to do to get up before everybody else, especially in the school year, I feel like I just get into the routine of doing it and it helps mm -hmm. so much. And yeah. like parents that I can tell when I'm not, like things just don't go as well. <laughs> <laughs> I love what you said. I think there's there's some freedom in like what Joyce told you that we we don't need to be legalistic about how we do it. But I also think God's kind of dealt with me on this that Yes, that's true. But also, there, maybe there's also some sacrifice on my part. Mm -hmm. Like, maybe I do need to set my alarm for 20 minutes earlier than I would normally need to get up. And that might push me into the 4 o'clock hour of the morning. God I also knows that, me very well in the 4 o'clock hour. He, he's never asked me for, and I'm very <laughs> grateful. <laughs> he loves you so much. I am not a morning person. 
And he does not even want that four o'clock hour time with me. Does he do that for Tim? Because he loves Tim so much. Tim, Tim is up oh, early up. and he is doing it long before I am. So, but I, I think what you're both saying is really important is that making the time and making a sacrifice. Mm-hmm. And it's hard sometimes. It is. And there were many times when, when the girls were little and I had to do it before everyone was up mm-hmm. because that's, after that, nothing stops. Right. You know, you're just running all the time. Um, then I got to a stage where I could spend time later when I was more, um, when I could learn better Mm -hmm. and I was more open to what the Holy Spirit was saying Mm -hmm. and more alert. And so, you know, now I find that there are, there are times that I'll, I want to do something early Mm -hmm. in the morning. I'll get up and do it. And I love my early morning prayer time walks. That's, that's one of the big things for me. But as far as just really digging into the Bible, for me, I do it much better in the evening. I'm, I'm a night owl, mm-hmm. so I, I love that. And God gives us the grace to do what we need to do, but He asks us to yeah. do it. And I think that's one of the biggest things because just being obedient is not the easiest mm-hmm. thing in the world. Yeah, it's true. It's hard. So, Nicole, how, how do you make it work? I feel like in this season of life, it is about setting aside time. Like Joyce was talking about, like we make time to go to the dentist or to brush our teeth or whatever. And I feel like, I don't know, especially as busy moms, we have probably our master schedule. Like I got a big calendar with all the things that we have to do for the week. And so I feel like I have to like intentionally say, okay, this time is going to be for me and God. Cause otherwise there's so many things that happen. So many things that come up. Um, so I feel like right now it is getting up a little bit before everybody else mm-hmm. and just making sure I have, and it's not a super long time. Like I get up maybe 30 minutes before everybody else. I have a minute to wake up and really it's just like talking to God, yeah, getting the word. Um, I know for me, I have to put my phone somewhere else mm-hmm. when I'm doing that. Cause I feel like when I sit down to spend that time with God is when every single List comes into my head, all the things I want to like jot down so I don't forget. Like yeah. every single distraction that could possibly come up usually tends to come at that time. Yes, <laughs> it, so it sure if does. Anything, if I don't have my phone to like make a note or add something to the shopping list, like that helps me so much to be able to stay focused on what I'm doing and to keep God at the center of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have a phrase. Oh, sorry. Go no, ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I have a phrase that I say to my boys all the time. If I want them to pay attention and I want to know that they're paying attention to me, yeah. I say, look at my face. And I feel like God will, mm. like that's times where he's like, hey, look over here. Quit that's like good. being distracted with this stuff. Look over here yeah. so that I can actually pay attention and hear what he wants to say and get the most out of that time. I love that. Mm. So let me ask both of you this. I, I think one of the main questions for our friends who are here with us it is honestly why hmm. you know it it is easy to say that's where we get our power and i'm a better person mm-hmm. if i do it mm-hmm. but let's let's be real practical and real honest what do we do in that time and and why are we better when we do it what do you see happen in your life when you you just give god some time nicole um i feel like the main thing is learning God's character. Hmm. And I think about it like if I'm getting to know somebody or if I want to know my husband better, whoever, like we spend time together and we talk. And I know we don't audibly hear God's voice, but his word is his voice to us. So I feel like it's so important to be in the word so that we can get to know God's character and know who he is, Hmm. which then helps us know who we are in Christ and helps us know the authority that we have as believers. And so I feel like that, to me, one of the most important things is spending time in God's Word so we can know who He is Mm -hmm. and really get an understanding Mm -hmm. of who He is. And I feel like the devil doesn't want us to do that. Mm -mm. I think that's that's another reason why it's there's always something to keep us from that because He knows when we, we know who God is and we know who we are, then, okay, then it's over. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know, when I confessed to you how I did a terrible job last week of this, those principles 
still were true though because of the time I've invested in spending with him. I I know his character. So as things yeah. came up last week, I could still lean on the fact that I know God is good. I know he's going to work things out. I know he's our provider. I yeah. know that his timing is perfect. And so the practical application of the time I've invested with him, I got to see the fruit of it last week. Mm-hmm. So even though I I failed in continuing that last week, that time with him, I got to draw from the bank of deposits I've been investing. Is that no, that's good. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, okay. <laughs> Those deposits I'd invested. Your ROI has been very good. But my return was so great yeah. last week. But I got his character came through so strongly last week with me. And I could feel his peace when I was feeling anxious. And mm. I know it's because I've gotten to know who he is with that time with him. So I, I love that part of it. Yeah. I, think it's good. I, I would even encourage you, maybe this is wrong. So all of you biblical scholars, please forgive me. But uh, <laughs> I would love to say it, it wasn't a failure. Okay. Uh, you know I'll what? We, we can't be so hard on ourselves. We can't be so legalistic. Yeah, that's really good. To say, you know, I failed last week. Hmm. Because I didn't do this, I, I think it's it's more of a I want to do it this week mm-hmm. because I saw the difference that it made mm-hmm. last week. It's a lesson that you learn, but every now and then there are going to be those times mm-hmm. that you just can't or you just don't, and not to see it as a failure. That's and good. you know, now God's disappointed with me. Mm-hmm. We have to look at our time with God as differently. I think about it as a parent how much mm-hmm. I love. To have those intimate conversations and quiet moments with our with our family, and I, I don't, you know, I'm not angry if mm-hmm. I if I don't get the time that mm-hmm. I was hoping for, um, usually, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but I'm not God, <laughs> so I don't think he's mad at us. I, yeah. you know, I don't think he saw it as a failure. I think he, he was like, child, I would love to hang out, mm-hmm. and I've got so much for you, mm-hmm. so much to tell you. So that makes you want to do it again instead yeah. of, oh, he's going to be mad. I don't want to come back. I'm so glad you said that because I bet I'm not alone in that feeling. Yeah. Of, like when we don't have the opportunity or we just choose not to, the guilt that we can feel, especially as Christ followers, like that's the one thing I know I'm supposed to do. And so I don't do it. I'm glad that you said that. Well, let's do this. Let's check in with Joyce one more time. She's going to tell us about what she will not leave the house without doing. Here she is. I don't have any trouble disciplining myself to get up and spend time with God now. I go to bed early so I can wake up early. Sometimes I'll wake up at 2, 3 o'clock and think, oh, I'll be glad when it's time to get up so I can go upstairs and spend time with God. I love my time with God because it's the foundation of everything else in my life. If you don't have that, you don't have a foundation. Well, Joyce, what do you do with that time? Just different stuff. You know, I read, I read the Bible, then maybe I don't read the Bible for a couple days and I I mean, I look like I've got a nest. I got books, oh, books, and, you know. I write letters to God. I love to write in my journal. I, I write down things that happened to me the day before and thank Him for things. And sometimes I'll just try to think up everything I can. And, you know, I'm only doing this because I know some of you just plain don't know what to do with yourself when you get in that time with God. And so I'm, I'm not trying to tell you to do what I'm doing but I'm just letting you know that it doesn't have to be all that classy. <laughs> it, it doesn't have to be real doctrinally correct. I mean, you know, you don't find a real doctrine on how to do this. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Well, what do we do when we get there? Just come and find out. Amen. Make it an adventure. Some people like to to walk, go out in the morning and walk and just talk to God. If you have a real problem with mornings, take your lunch hour at work and instead of sitting at the table and gossiping with everybody, just go somewhere, eat your lunch, read a little bit, go take a walk, talk to God. God, I need you. Lord, we don't know how much we need God. You know, I used to pray when I was desperate 
until I found out I was desperate all the time. <laughs> That's a problem. I was desperate and didn't know it. I thought I had things under control. I had a plan. And I was trying to get God to meet my plan. I was such a pathetic mess. I was like the person in Revelation that thought they had it all together and I was miserable, poor, blind, and naked. <laughs> Is anybody understanding what I'm saying tonight? You know what? Now you're going to be all full of yourself and you're going to get a, I'm, bless God, in the morning I'm going to spend time with God. And just as sure as I'm sitting here, some of you are going to go in there and fall asleep. Some are going to think, oh my gosh. I mean, the devil will make you itch. You'll have to run to the bathroom every few seconds. The stupid phone will start ringing. You will think of everything that you probably couldn't remember any other time, but you'll think of it then. Am I telling the truth? So now, now look, mama's going to tell you something. You got to say, devil, I am not giving up. I don't care how long it takes me to develop this habit. God is going to be first in my time. And I'm, I'm telling you the truth, even if I could only spend 30 seconds with God in the morning, I would not dare go out of my house without talking to God. <laughs> She will not dare go out of her house without doing that. And I get it. It's like, like she said, I love what she was saying. It makes me itch just thinking about it. That when you start to do it, you begin to itch or you have to go to the bathroom or every time. You think about everything else. I, I was I this is just yesterday. I was spending I was spending my time with God and you know, I was doing all these things and I was sitting in our sunroom. Because one of the things that really helps me is to have some place cozy and comfortable and beautiful mm -hmm. that I like to spend time with him. So whether it's a porch swing or someplace nice outside or in my sunroom, that just helps me. Mm -hmm. So I was in the sunroom, and um, I'm starting to redecorate it. So as I'm in there doing this, I start thinking about tile. <laughs> and the next thing I know, I'm researching tile online instead of being on the Bible app, you know? Oh, I know this so well. So like, yes. Stop, I, yep. I can't do that. Uh -huh. It's so easy just for your mind to go different places. Mm -hmm. But what she's saying is so important. Like, even though my time with God may not be all of it first thing in the morning, yeah. I do love those walks with Him. Just sharing my heart with him and listening mm -hmm. to him as well, quiet. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that makes such a difference. And first thing when I wake up in the morning is just saying, good morning, Lord, Let, letting mm -hmm. those be the first things to roll off my tongue. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it makes a difference. Nicole, what advice would you give someone now whose life is at a pace and, and a place where it's not easy to make this happen? What would you say to them? I would say first, don't feel bad, <laughs> like we've already talked about. Like if it doesn't look exactly how you think it should, or if it doesn't look exactly how somebody else does it, don't feel bad about that. Because God made us all different. We all have different lives. We all have different things going on. And he doesn't want us to feel condemnation. He doesn't want us to feel pressure. He doesn't want us to do things just because we feel like we have an obligation that we have to. And I think once we get into that routine and we get into that habit and we realize what a difference it makes, then we'll desire to do it. And then it, it might even become easier to do it. But I think like the devil just wants people to feel like they're not doing enough. They're not doing it right. So then they just stop doing it all together because he knows that's going to keep them in a place where they're not their spirit's not getting stronger and they're not growing. And yeah. so quit listening to all those things those lies that are telling you you're not doing it right, you're not doing it enough, so you might as well just give up because mm -hmm. that's a complete lie. It's really and good. God wants that time with us, and He desires that time with us. Yeah. And the more we do it and the more we discipline ourselves to do it, then the easier it becomes and the more enjoyable it becomes. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it does take a little effort to make yeah. it happen. Absolutely. Yeah. We got a comment from a friend, the Green Empire Events 883. 8873. I wanted to read it because the way she explains doing this with God makes it not complicated. It's kind of like what you're saying, Nicole. I, 
I just think it's beautiful. She says, find a way to just protect your day. First thing in the morning, I keep switching my morning routines and they become better each day and effective. Sometimes I just do the routine of reading the word, listening to a short sermon, not more than 20 minutes, meditation 10 minutes, and praying every single morning. It's effective and helpful to get your day going. And it's what she's saying, I think is so great. It's not rocket science. Like it's just, Mm -hmm. that's not tons of time. And maybe that's not the time that we can do. Sometimes I don't have 20 minutes. Sometimes I have five. (laughs) But just to take a second and to refocus on you are in charge, God, and I am not. Um, There's a verse I wanted to read. It's Psalms 135 through 6. It says, I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits. And in his word, I put my hope. I wait for the Lord more than the watchman wait for the morning, more than the watchman wait for the morning. And it makes me teary-eyed because, like, I want to be that excited to meet with Him. It's not something we have to do. Like, I get the opportunity to go sit before the King of the universe who loves me and cares about the silly little thing I'm worried about. Um, He's just waiting for me to show up. Yeah. Your turn. Well, He cares (laughs) that you're going to go home from vacation to boxes and— A house that's not unpacked, and and he'll help you through yeah. that. I mean, just like every little detail, the and, and the horrible big things that you're dealing with yeah. that you can't understand why you're there. Mm-hmm. Like God, why is our family suffering like this? Absolutely. Why is this illness happening to someone I love? Mm-hmm. Why have I lost this? Mm-hmm. And God is right there in the midst of it, but we don't realize that as much as we can, if we spend the time with Him, Mm -hmm. for Him to be able to show us that love, for Him to be able to tell us in His Word who He is and how much He cares about every aspect Mm -hmm. in our life. So we we can just miss so much if we don't give Him the opportunity to love us when we need it so Mm -hmm. desperately. I remember a couple years ago when um, we were walking through some hard things as a family, and so that time with the Lord in the morning was a priority for me. And I, that is where I found stability during that mm-hmm. season, because I knew no matter what chaos would happen through the day or what conversations we were going to have or whatever else was going on, I had stability in my life because I knew in the morning I meet with the Lord. And in the morning, He's going to remind me who I am in Him. And in the morning, He's going to give me the strength I need to go one more day. And it kind of just put perspective yeah, in that that's season. Yeah, so good. Yeah, and His mercies are new every morning. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you wake up this morning and God's like, you didn't talk to me yesterday, so sorry. You know, No, His mercies are new, and He's right there waiting for Mm -hmm. us, and He loves us. And Nicole, I I just think about what some of your mornings must be like, right? You're trying to get everybody here and there. You got a lot going on. You got to get to school for the— older boys, and you got to spend time homeschooling the little boys. And and I know your husband, and you're a saint there also. I, I love and adore him, but we all have husbands that we have to figure out how to live with too, right? When- mm-hmm. We do. We sure do. <laughs> so I, I just, I love that there's nothing we can't take to God when we need to. Yes. I feel like I've been realizing too, like that time in the morning is so important. Like Aaron was saying, you're getting what you need for that day. Mm -hmm. But I've realized that if I invite God into the rest of my day, Mm -hmm. as I'm like cooking dinner or I'm driving somebody here and there, I feel like that's the part that it really makes a difference for me. Like, and probably think I'm crazy sometimes because I'll be in the car and I'm just talking out loud to God. <laughs> it looks like I'm talking to myself, but I feel like when you invite him in to all the things, like he's there anyways, why yeah. wouldn't I want to invite him in to help me with all the things that I'm doing? And I feel like my day is so much better when it's just like something comes up and I'm like, oh, let's just pray about it real quick. Like I find yeah. in the car, with my kids, if we're talking about something and we're like, hey, let's just cover it real quick doesn't have to be a big, long, dramatic, religious thing. Like It's just like, hey, God, this situation is weird. Can you help us with it? So bringing him in on it, I feel like, makes such a big difference for me because then it's like, okay, God's right there. He's right there with us. He's going to help us in all the chaos, Mm -hmm. all the... All the things he's right there. <laughs> yeah, which is so great because that watching your 
boys or your boys watching you incorporate God into just every aspect of your daily life, what a great foundation for them. That's just going to be so normal to them as they grow and they develop their own relationship with God. I think that's brilliant. Yeah, we're trying to, and we try to like, there's something like nice about thinking about like being cozy in my room by myself when I'm studying the word or whatever, but we do try to make an effort to just be out in the living room. Mm -hmm. Like when they wake up and see that we're taking time to read or just to set an example for them. Cause it's wanting to say, okay, you need to spend time with God, but then what does that look like? And showing them, yeah, it's not easy and we may not do it every day, but we're Mm -hmm. putting an effort to, to try to make that our daily routine Yeah, and show them, I think talks cheap sometimes, but to show them that we're trying to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. Hope set them up for, setting those good habits too. Oh, that's really true. And not compartmentalizing, like you said. This is my prayer time. Mm -hmm. This is the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that Mm -hmm. way. It's it's a continual walk and talk with God. It's inviting Him into every moment of our lives, Mm -hmm. and not just when we sit down and open the Bible. Mm -hmm. And it, it does make such an impact on us. And and Nicole's one of those people that always has a song. Like Nicole, I don't even know if you realize, she probably does, but she's just always humming and singing and just <laughs> there's just always kind of a, a worshipful atmosphere and a peaceful atmosphere about Nicole. Mm. And so I, I, I think that's important that we don't try to separate the rest of our lives from our walk with God. Do you know you sing all the time? I catch myself humming a lot. Yeah, I probably don't even realize it, but yeah, there is usually. I a love that. I didn't know. That. <laughs> Next time I'm with you, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not even tell you I'm near you, and I'm just going to listen. <laughs> but I think who knows what could come out. <laughs> but that's so true. She is. You are. You right there are always so peaceful and full of joy. Like there is just a, a calm presence about you when you are in a room, and so that is that's the Holy Spirit in you. Yeah, I I know it is because it's. Yeah, if it's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There are so many times that you're just like, it's not me. Yeah. It's it's a lot uh, of help. Mm-hmm. And that's why we plug in every day. That's why we need yeah. that time with God, because there's so much there that He brings us that is not natural in mm-hmm. me that we don't have on our own. Mm-hmm. And so, wow, it makes a difference. So, yeah. Nicole, thank you. Don't call the babysitter and tell her you're done. Enjoy a little bit of time in a quiet house. I'm <laughs> and for all of you, I I don't know what it will take to make it happen, and I know it won't be easy. Um, I know there will be challenges, but it is so worth it to allow God to speak to you, to get to know who He is, mm-hmm. to just give Him a little bit of time and see what happens. And the next thing you know, it might be instead of five minutes, it might be 10, you know? Mm-hmm. You, you will want more and more of what God has for you because His love for you is that great. And not to feel bad about what you're not doing, but to look forward to what God has for you. So we're praying great things for everyone as they do this. Yeah, that they meet Jesus in a new way. Exactly, exactly. It'll make a huge difference. All right, you know all of this, right? Go to joycemeyer.org slash talk it (laughs) out. I heard them. They said that, yes, ma'am. Yes, we've heard this before. (laughs) But that way you can catch up on all of our episodes. You can share them with other people if you want. Um, Just make sure more than anything, maybe this is part of your time with God together, that we can all talk about life with God Mm -hmm. instead of separating all those different aspects of our life. So we think it makes a huge difference to spend this time with you and for all of us to get together and to talk about who God is. So we love you, we appreciate you, and we'll see you next time when we talk it out. Bye. Bye.